When asked what surprised him most about humanity, the Dalai Lama answered, we sacrifice our health in order to make wealth. Then we sacrifice our wealth in order to get back our health. We're so anxious about what will happen in the future that we don't enjoy the present. The result being, we don't live in the present or the future. We end up living feeling like we're never going to die and then die never having truly lived. Ellen Goodman said normal is getting dressed in clothes that you buy for work and driving through traffic in a car that you're still paying for in order to get to the job that you need to pay for the clothes and car and the home that's empty all day just so you can afford to live in it. We live in a world where daydreams are more common than dream jobs, where money clouds our search for meaning, in search for profit, we sacrifice our quest for purpose and in the pursuit of those paychecks, we give up our passions. We're completely rooted to our routines. We're plagued by indecision and lack of vision. They say that the most powerful prison is one when you don't even know that you're locked up. See, the suits are our uniforms. Our cufflinks are the handcuffs. Our ties are the chains. Our boss is like the guard and well, our cubicles are our cells. And now I know why they call it the glass ceiling because it shatters our dreams. The only thing we excel at is Microsoft. Now that's a PowerPoint. You know what it's like. We spend the whole day trying to get our work on time, but then spend all of our time thinking about work. We wish our out of office could be permanent. We wish that our inbox would always remain empty. Our LinkedIn resumes are more interesting than our actual jobs. Our profile pictures are the happiest we've been in a long time. We live for the weekend, but then end up feeling weak clockwork and monotony, but honestly, could Mondays be more meaningful? Could Tuesdays be less torture? Could Wednesdays be more worth it? Could Thursdays be more transformative? Could Fridays be more fulfilling? We count down the next 50 weeks knowing that there's another 50 years. We count down for the next escape knowing that there really isn't one. Because even when we're away from our desks, our minds are still there with the checklists in our heads. We stuff ourselves into our work clothes, then our buses, then the cars, then the trains, and then our offices, only to wait five days to live again. And we don't have time to eat dinner together, so we end up eating out of takeaway boxes, not realizing that the TV box takes away from our relationships. We eat on the go, meet on the go, we even sleep on the go and then wonder why everyone cheats on the go. We're told it's normal to have a nine to five. I mean, actually, sorry, it's a nine to nine. And it's fine if you don't get enough time with the person you love it took you so long to find. It's normal to work late nights for that next holiday. We work 11 months in a row for one month of leave with pay. Hey, who came up with that? It's not normal, we have to reclaim our lives because right now we can all barely survive and because when he comes late home from work, she says, you work so hard for a job that would replace you tomorrow if you drop dead. And he says, I don't have time for this right now. And then she says, nothing ever changes. We force ourselves out of bed to live the same day again and again and call it a life. Imagine this for a moment. What if Oprah listened to her haters and doubters? What if Steve Jobs settled for a real job? What if The Rock never broke through depression? What if Ellen never overcame the bullying? Imagine a world where everyone lived their passion. We'd be better people, we'd be better partners, we'd be better parents. See, I've never seen a strong person with an easy past. We all have a passion, we all have a genius inside us. We have that potential. I know that we've all been in that position, feeling confused and seriously lacking mission, but then I ask myself, at the end of my life, what will I regret? And the answer is clear. The pain of regret far outweighs the pain of risk. So next time you're going through challenges, just remember this. A winner is just a loser who tried one more time. All you need is one person to say yes. One moment can change everything. There are decades when nothing happens and there are days where decades happen. A year from now, you will have wished you started today.